It's pasting time. Thermal putty. Cryonaut. TFX. Zizio. Kingpin pick. Streamosaurus. Yeah. Yeah. We're ready to paste into action. action. Working together to fight overheating. Save Intel and, and all of their shitty products. XOC people pay way too much for me. False advertising. Look out, frame chasers, because we're gonna see which paste is the best. There's a lot of thermal paste on the market, but only one can be the victor. Once again, this video is brought to you by all of these supporters here. They give me money every month so I can blow on a whole bunch of paste that I don't need so that we can see what's the best. If you want to support independent testing like this, consider subscribing on the website or on Twitch. Join us in the Discord. Come have a merry old time. Links to all these in the description below in case you do want to buy them. And uh, yeah, let's go on. Basically, we're going to test all of these thermal pastes at 150 watts of load, 200 watts of load, and variable load. Whoops. We're also going to check how much each of these cost per gram uh, of paste. So we're going to see which one performs the best and which one is the best bang for buck. All right, so here are the heavy hitters we got for you today. We got the Kingpin KPX. Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, the uh, regular version. We got some Zizio Thermal Paste. They advertise this as like 14 point something watts per meter Kelvin. So it's supposed to be pretty good. Uh, Zizio, actually, they make some really good thermal pads. I've been using them a lot in all my GPUs. So newcomer to the scene. We're going to see what happens here. And then we got the Thermal Right TFX, also advertised with a really high watt rating. And uh, cry on that extreme over here, the pink stuff. We're going to be using fresh spatulas for each one, no cross-contamination. We're going to be using Fitz polish in between all of the runs on both surfaces so that none of the old paste is going to contaminate the new paste, right? So fresh spatulas, fresh surfaces, no contamination. All right, we're going to get started with Cryonet Extreme first because I actually already just put that on there. So we're going to get started with this one first. Okay, so our test subject for today is going to be this Deep Cool Castle 360 and a 10900K with a Rocket Cool Copper IHS. So the trick with this kind of testing is we want to make the actual thermal paste the lowest hanging fruit of the thermal transfer between the, the, the heat, right? So... With the Rocket Cool Copper IHS, it's delitted with liquid metal behind it on a 10900K. Maximum surface area. This is quite a bit larger than the stock IHS. Both surfaces are lapped, so there's going to be perfect contact there, right? So, like, look at the spread of the paste. So, the entire IHS has perfect contact there, right? Um, the pump speed is also 2700 RPM on this one. So it's fast enough to get the water out, right? Basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to minimize all the other variables in the equation except the thermal paste, right? So when actually doing the variable spike testing, how much of the spike will be able to be absorbed will come down to that paste. If you use a regular 10900K or like a 12900K or something, like something stock, um, the lowest hanging fruit will actually become the solder inside of the uh, IHS, right? So that's why this route is much better for thermal paste testing. Quick interjection here, it's the next day, but we are not going to be using liquid metal today just because the surface of the IHS and the pump are both copper. And when you use liquid metal on two copper surfaces, it's just a nightmare to deal with. So we're not going to do that. We're going to save that for another video for another day when I have a custom loop and like a nickel plated block. Then we'll see thermal paste versus liquid metal. But for today, we're going to leave that out. Just because I don't want to lap the surfaces again. Okay, so we're at 16 minutes here, 15 minutes, whatever. Uh, steady load at 150 watts and the package temperature is at 67 Celsius for the cry not extreme. Okay, so now we're going to reset this and we're going to click variable instead. So now we're going to do 150 watts variable 
Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna open hardware info, right, after we launch this, and then we're gonna look at the maximum package temperature that the CPU core will hit. This is the field that we're after here, CPU package maximum field. So as OCCT does its variable load, the load is gonna look like this, very sine wavy, right? So the paste will show us how much of that load it can absorb at the max, right? So let's run this for 15 minutes and then we'll come back. Okay, 15 minutes on variable here and the maximum temperature recorded was 74 Celsius. So that's a seven degree Celsius temperature spike that the Cryonaut Extreme could not deal with. Okay, we're 50 minutes in and we're doing 200 watts steady and the temperature on the package is 81, 82 Celsius on there, somewhere around there. So those are the results for Cryonaut Extreme. So let's move on. Okay, next up, we'll just go from right to left, I suppose. So let's go throw on this uh, Thermal Right TFX stuff and then see how that performs. So this Thermal Right stuff is actually pretty, like, I don't know how to describe it, thick and dry. Like, it doesn't apply the same as the Cryonaut. And, uh, like, the Cryonaut is quite liquidy. And this has a pretty distinct smell to it, so, uh... You can definitely tell that whatever compounds they're using is very different. Because it's so thick, I'm trying to put a lot of pressure on it to make the layer like as thin as possible. Because if it's this thick, I'm not sure if it's going to be able to squish out effectively, right? So we're just leaving the AIO pump and the fans at maximum here. 2700, uh, 1800 on the pump. Just because, again, don't make the AIO the lowest hanging fruit, right? All right, so here are the results for the thermal right. We got um, three Celsius hotter at 200 watts there. So that's gonna be an L for the thermal right. Next on the list, we're gonna be trying out this uh, Zizio stuff. Okay, this stuff feels, looks, spreads, and smells exactly like the thermal right stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume this is just a Chinese knockoff of the thermal right stuff. Oh yeah, look at that. It's actually holding at 66 Celsius, 15 minutes in. Oh, it hit 65. So it's actually, it's actually like a degree and a half better than the Cryonaut Extreme. That's actually kind of wild. So it looks like we got a winner here. So we're doing small uh, 200 watts here and it's holding at 81, 82. Right, so it performs exactly the same as Cryonaut Extreme, but it's on sale for seven bucks right now, which actually puts it at three dollars and fifty cents per gram. So it's like one, it's, it's a third of the price of Cryonaut Extreme and performs exactly the same. There you go. So so far, the Zizio is the goat. It doesn't perform any better, but it's a third of the price. Don't forget those affiliate links down below, boys. Okay, next on the list, regular cryonaut. All right, we're at 15 minutes and we are at 69 Celsius for the regular cryonaut. So that's actually three Celsius worse than the Zezio ones. Zezio? Zezio? Oh yeah, so even on variable here, 77. So about three Celsius hotter on all the numbers. And this one costs eight dollars and fifty cents per gram. So so far, the 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 original Cryonaut is uh, a lot worse than I thought it was. Okay, last but not least, post those kingpin picks, boys. Okay, so the KPX kind of does the same thing as the Zizio. Kind of hovers around sixty-five, sixty-six here. It kind of leans more towards the sixty-five. So you can, you can consider this as like, it performs maybe half a degree better as the Zizio at 150 watts. Okay, so at 200 watts, 15 minutes, looks like KPX is the victor by one, one and a half Celsius. Now, keep in mind though that 
I started over here during the day while the sun was out, and now it's nighttime, like five hours later over here. So it could just be that the temperature of the room dropped over time when it got here. I don't have a temperature normalized room. Um, maybe I'll give this another shot tomorrow morning to confirm, but these are the results for now. Okay, so the KPX and the Zizio are the two best ones. Now, the interesting thing is here, this one is a lot thinner and, and like waterier, thinner. It's just thinner. This one is a lot thicker. Like, I'm not sure if you can actually see it. This one's more of like a putty and this one is more of like a, like a paste, right? So bonus round, let's try and mix them. That way we can try and thin this one out a little bit because if this one performed as well as that one being as thick as it is, what if we just thin it up a little bit and then we, you know, see what happens. Yeah, that's a weird mix. It's like the, the Zizio is so dry and thick that like even adding half KPX, it's still like pretty thick. It's not really liquidy at all. All right, so the shit mix ended up being performing exactly the same as the KPX. Now, you might be able to actually get the Zizio to perform as well as the KPX. Maybe if you can just apply it thinner. It's just like the Zizio is so thick and dry that it's so much more difficult to apply thinly than it is the KPX because the KPX is so much more... Uh, you know, watery, right? So this is way easier to apply a thin layer. This takes a little bit of work to get that thin layer going, but maybe it is possible to make this one perform as well. Final bonus round. TGPP10 Thermal Putty. This is the stuff we use on the uh, G6X memory temps for, uh, you know, graphics cards. This stuff drops your memory temps by like 10 Celsius, but it should work as a paste. Let's give it a shot. So this stuff is actually the hardest to apply and I'm not even, I'm like not even sure how thin to make it really, but I don't know. Let's try that and see what happens. All right. We're only seven minutes in here with the putty and we're already hitting like 71, 72 ish. So not great. Not, not great for the putty. I mean, it's putty. It wasn't meant for this anyway, but um, I'm not going to bother continuing with the rest of the results. Just don't use putty for thermal paste pretty much. All right, so these are the results here. We're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna go back and do the Cryonaut Extreme now that it's nighttime to confirm these results. So we're gonna do one last one again with Cryonaut Extreme, and then that's it for this video. Okay, 15 minutes in, and we are at 65 Celsius, 64, 65. So, it does look like that running these tests in the afternoon or in the PM, well, it's actually like almost 1 a.m. now, and I've been doing this for the last eight hours. But the temperature difference of the daytime versus the nighttime was the factor here. So I'm going to complete these ones to confirm it, but it seems like KPX and Cryonaut Extreme are the exact same. Okay, yeah, uh, 16 minutes. We're at uh, 80 Celsius here, 79, 80. So Cranot Extreme and KPX are identical. So let's go over to the chart here and then we'll do a conclusion of which paste won today's test. Okay, so it ended up being the Cryonaut Extreme and the KPX actually had the best temperatures by about one Celsius. The Zizio was trailing behind by one Celsius. But look at the pricing. The Cryonaut Extreme is $9.50 a gram. KPX is much better at $6 a gram. The Zizio right now is $3.50 a gram. So Thermal Grizzly is just milking the shit out of you guys if you're buying this. Don't even bother with it. This is like, why would you pay triple the price for one degree? At least, at least KPX, I think, is a fair price here. $6 a gram, sure. But the, yeah, this is... The winner for today is going to be the Zizio. Also, shout out to, uh, I think, Paver or Pavir. He was a supporter that actually requested that I test this one. I didn't even know this existed. But he requested it, and it actually ended up being the winner. So, just goes to show you, you need supporters to suggest things because I can't keep track of every product, right? 
So if you want the absolute best performance and you're not afraid to spend a bit more money, get the KPX, I suppose. And if you're just the, a smart buyer, get the Zizio. Now, the, the final thought here for the shit mix was the shit mix performed the same as the KPX and the Crown Extreme. So if you can somehow find some way to make this thinner and not as thick, like, I don't know how you would do that. Like, you know what I mean? But if you can get this thinner somehow, it will perform as well as the KPX, which is what the shit mix was. Anyway, guys, that's it for this one. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you like the content, hit that subscribe button. Do all that YouTube SEO stuff. Like, share, subscribe. Leave your comments down below what thermal paste you guys use. And I will see you in the next one. Talk to you later.